Hello, my name is David Bliss, and I am the pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church near Haskins, Ohio. Before we begin our Good Friday service, I want to share, uh, share and invite you to uh, watch our Easter service, which will be at 10, 10 o'clock, excuse me, 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. And now we have come to worship and hear God's word of comfort and hope that comes to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, and I find no rest. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all bone, all my bones. They stare and they gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Be you, O Lord, be not far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Well, let us now confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness for the sake of Jesus our Savior. Almighty God, we daily sin against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. We turn away from your word to listen to the temptations of the world around us. We seek to do our own will instead of your will. We do not love others as our Lord commanded us, and we do not follow him as we should. Have mercy on us and forgive us. God has had mercy on us. He sent his Son to be our Savior. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of sacrifice, carried our sins in his own body to the tree of the cross. There he, <clears throat> he suffered the penalty of death that we deserved. He rose from death to grant us forgiveness and life in his name. And I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, we have forgiveness and life. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be our Savior, Jesus, who was innocent of all sin, carried our sins to the cross, for they were washed away in his blood. When soldiers and onlookers mocked and reviled him, he did not answer in kind. He entrusted himself into your hands. Help us to be faithful at all times to your word and your will for us. If we suffer for the sake of Jesus' name, if we are mocked because we believe in him, keep our faith strong and help us to respond in love and share with others the good news of salvation. Hear our prayer in the name of Jesus, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. The epistle reading for this service is from Peter, the second chapter. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have found now returned 
to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Here ends the reading. Before I begin my sermon, I just want to thank Larry Asmus for being my worship assistant. Peace, mercy, and grace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I grew up with the idea that boys don't, just don't cry, especially growing men. You know, I really hardly ever cry except for times of deep sadness, whether it be in my family or be, uh, or be uh, a, a pet or, or whatever. I, I cry when I grieve. I cry also at times when I watch the movies of, about Jesus, especially the times where he suffered and died on the cross. To visualize the brutality that he received before he died on the cross at the hands of the Romans. Those movies are no exaggeration to the Roman brutality that they impose upon the people. You know, I can't fathom the idea of, of going into a place where I know that I will be killed, but Jesus did. To face the cross, I cannot fathom with the nails and the in my feet and in my hands. That's, I cannot believe that. And I know as a human being, I couldn't do it. But thanks be to Jesus that he did. He did it because he loved us. He had such great love for us that he was willing to die so that we may be saved and also have life. Now Matthew wrote his crucifixion story that there was a storm that split the curtain in the temple. You know, I've always wondered if that storm was God shedding tears for his son on that fatal day that is known as Good Friday. I mean, in one of the creation stories of the Bible, it does say that humans were made in the image of God, right? And I believe that means God gave us some characteristics of him, like free will, all the emotions we have as human, like love, compassion, kindness, sadness, and even, and even grief. It's unbelievable that God, that God was willing to send his son to the grave. You know, God gave us a lot of gifts. If I, a human being, grieve at the death of Jesus, I wonder how God the Father, how did he feel? Did he grieve? Were those raindrops tears from him? The Gospel reading for this Good Friday service is from Matthew, the 27th chapter. <clears throat> As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. 
and over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he desires him, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land, until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, that is, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquakes and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. Here is the Gospel. Listen, listen to Matthew's version of Jesus dying as Larry just read. It said, From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. And at that time, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Now, one can only assume that clouds overcast the sky like a great storm, and then it rained. Although we don't know how this darkness occurred, but it is clear, I believe, that God caused it. Nature testified to the severity of Jesus' death, while Jesus' friends and enemies alike fell silent in his encircling gloom. The darkness on that Friday afternoon was both physical as well as spiritual. And I believe that God the Father grieved and wept as only a father would. What took place after Jesus' death are signs, I believe, of grieving. The rain is like a person's tears from deep sadness when a loved one dies. The earth shaking, rock splitting, and the curtain of the temple torn in two represents the anger of grieving of a grieving father whose son had just died. 
and anger for those who condemned an innocent man and a righteous one also. Now, putting it in these terms, you know, it really personalizes God for me. It makes me appreciate the sacrifice of God's Son, which demonstrates the forgiveness and unconditional love of the God the Father. The tearing of the curtain was very symbolic as well. You see, the temple had three sections in it. The courts, the holy place where only priests could enter, and, the, and then only once a year to atone the sins of the nation. It was the curtain that separated the holy place from the most holy place that was split in two at Jesus' death. It symbolized that the barrier between God and the people was removed. That there was no longer a barrier between God and his people. With Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection three days later, now all the people were free to approach God because of Christ's sacrifice for our sins. And I reflect that what greater love can there be than God forgiving the sons, sins of those of humankind that were responsible for his death? Amen. We'll continue with the litany. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. All you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and also in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Now there's a prayer that it, I say at the end of the service before the people leave, and it's said this way. Where there is faith, there is love. And where there is love, there is peace. And where there is peace, there is God. And where there is God, there is no need. Go in peace, let your light shine. Thanks be to God. <laughs>